So hey everybody, I just got these fun papers in from a company called uh, One Canoe Two, and you can see down here, the collection is called Hazelwood, and it's being distributed by American Crafts. And when I saw this paper, and I was playing with all my frames from the last project where I made a frame wreath, um, I noticed I still had a ton of frames and I was trying to brainstorm another way to use them. And I thought this was kind of a really cool background that you could put inside of a frame and then have some fun kind of using some kitchen decor kind of stuff. So we are gonna use this as the backdrop for these. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint them. Any frame will work. These are just a couple that I ended up getting from my next door neighbor who was throwing them out. Uh, I also got a couple from another neighbor who was throwing them out. I just basically kind of asked around to see if anybody had some old frames they didn't want and started kind of collecting them. And it's an easy, cheap way to get some frames. Another good way to find some frames that are pretty inexpensive is go to your like Goodwill or any kind of resale place. You can even get some cheapy ones, especially if you're not worried about the fact that they're wood um, or anything like that. You can get those at any of like the dollar store. They sell some pretty inexpensive frames there too. All right, so go ahead and pop out all this stuff and we're not even gonna use that. We're just using the actual frame part themselves. So this just becomes a little bit of garbage. If you have a use for some glass, and as you can tell, this is not a new frame in any way, shape or form. First thing though, is you do wanna kind of dust them because you don't wanna paint over anything that's all kinds of dusty. So just, Get in there, you can use a little cloth, use a chamois. I'm just gonna use my finger just to kind of wipe it up. Just get in there and make sure you get all the dust off. Because these guys have been sitting for a while, not being used. So this is just a good um, DIY and decor paint. You can use this for indoor and outdoor. It's from Tattered Angels. Uh, any good quality paint would work. I, I like this one personally. This is in an ivory color. The whole feel for this is kind of like a farmhouse kitchen or like a rustic country kitchen. And so that's why we've got, you know, we're going for distressed and you'll see. So first step is, is take your kind of ivory paint. A white would work by like kind of the off color of the ivory and go ahead and paint up your frames. So at this point, this has got a first coat. We're gonna let them dry and we're gonna work on the silverware. All right, so I, I went in my um, kitchen and I found a couple of old spoons and, and a fork, well, one spoon and one fork that I just, they're oddballs, they don't like quite fit. If you don't have anything in your stash or you've never been given, like these were hand-me-downs from some family a long time ago. In a pinch, if you can't find some old fashioned stuff, um, you can always use plastic because we're gonna paint them anyway. If you do not wanna paint them, then don't paint them if you wanna keep them silver. But I was afraid they just wouldn't pop on the paper that we're using, so it's really kind of up to you. I'm just using a good quality um, acrylic paint. This one, again, is from Tattered Angels, and it's our high impact paint. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint all of these into black. I'm not worried about the back. I just want to get the front and the sides because you're going to see that from the side. And these are going to take a couple of coats as well. All right, so while those other two things are drying with their top coat, we're gonna go ahead and cut this down to size. And I already did it to one of them, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rip this little piece off the back here, just pop it off and throw it away. These are gonna be a wall hanging. If you wanted it to be something that would sit on the top of a counter, then you could leave those because then it would be a frame, but this is gonna be to me a wall. And whenever it has those little floppy parts in the back, I always feel like it doesn't sit nice and firm on the wall. So. These should be exactly the same size. And yep, they are because of the same size frame. And I believe these are a five by seven picture frame. So we need to cut down this paper to be five by seven. The one that I'm using right here is called Sweet as Honey. And again, it's from One Canoe Two. I keep wanting to say one canoe shoe. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> so we're going to have this go up and down. So we want to make sure that it's cut the correct way. So the tall side is going to be seven inches and then the shorter side is going to be five. So we need to make sure that we cut this way to seven. And cut. And we need two of them. So then we need two of them cut at five. If you did the five first, all your bugs would be facing the other way and then it wouldn't make sense. So just make sure that you're cutting it so they actually make sense the correct direction. And I wanna make sure because we're gonna put our fork or the spoon or the fork right in the middle, it's not covering up one of the bees. So I'm going to cut so that the bee right here, so this bee will be off to the side. 
and then there'll be a B here. So this is completely plain. That's what I was kind of going for. So it is covering up and then we have a complete empty cover in the middle here. And that's what we're not having. So we're going to do the same thing here, cut down to five. I don't think there's a good way because now I have a B in the middle. No matter which way I cut, I take my spoon, just pretend this is a spoon and see how it's covering up that B. So I'm actually going to get out a second sheet. If that does not bother you, it's a personal thing. I was actually given two sheets of this, so I'm going to end up using both. So now they're not exactly identical. The, the little bees are kind of placed in a little bit of a different location, but the center is still nice and free. All right, so clear this up. So what I have right here is my creative station and I want a good solid coverage all through this and I want it to be able to be easy and simple. So I'm gonna take this paper and I'm gonna run it through my creative station. I'm actually gonna do it this way. So it's going in like this and I have the permanent adhesive on here right now. So I'm just gonna lay it in there, run it through. And then I'm gonna take the second one, now that this one's all pushed through, and run the second one through. Push down, and now these have become big giant stickers. Make sure your bees are facing the correct way and go ahead and line them up. And they don't have to be perfect because again, these are gonna go in the frames and part of this is gonna get covered up anyway. So I'm not too terribly concerned if they're not perfect, perfect. So place that in there. Do the same over here. And if you notice, I don't have the same mat that I've had. I have three separate mats that I keep on my desk at all times. So if I do need to pull something off and let it dry, I still have a mat below my desk or below my work surface. So that way I always have something on the go. All right, now we're gonna go back in and add a second coat to these guys. And then we're gonna let them dry for a good long time before we do anything else to them. Okay, so I've let everything dry overnight. Truthfully, it was two nights because I didn't have a chance to come back and play this again. Um, but it really does not take an overnight. But if you paint it, walk away from it, you can always come back and pick up the project. What I am now doing, and you can already see that I've kind of started doing it for this one, is I have started to distress by taking a little bit of some sandpaper. And this is a pretty fine sandpaper. Um, and just starting to distress the edges of the frame so that way it's pulling up what was underneath hitting all those edges all these little nooks and crannies and this is partly why I like these frames that have lots of ridges because when you sand them down this one doesn't have as many you get to see more lips and ridges that have some um, you can pull the paint off and see what's underneath so it's really quite easy you can get in here if you don't have a sandpaper like this anything that you would get from any of those you know, Home Depot, Lowe's, stuff like that. They all have sandpaper. Go in your garage, you probably have something stuffed in there. If not, you can always go find a little, even little pieces of it. You know, they could be flat. In some ways, those might be easier to get in some of the ridges than mine, but this is just what I usually use. Okay. You want to kind of dust it down because when you sand it, you're going to end up getting little bits of sawdust, basically, but you're getting paint dust. <laughs> I now need to do the same thing to this one. You're just going to go in, you're kind of rubbing off the paint, distressing it, catch those edges, get in there, make it look weathered and worn. All right, you kind of do the same thing now that I've see I've worn it out and this one had the gold underneath. So that's what's popping through and it's absolutely fine. The color tones that are in here, they all match. We've got yellows, we've got blacks, we've got oranges, we've got browns. So the gold kind of fits in with the color scheme that's happening in this paper, which is why I picked that paper. Now I'm just going to take my sandpaper and get in here, show up, kind of re show some of the silver on here. So that way you can kind of see that there's a little bit, just, just a little bit of something. Get in here, kind of show, look like it's just done something. It doesn't need to be perfect. We just want to 
edge it up a little bit and then use a cloth and then just get rid of all the little nooks and crannies. All right, so since we're doing a distressed look, I wanna continue with that effect. So I just pulled out some, any ink would really work. I just happen to have a really good brown that I wanted to use. And I'm gonna start kind of in the corner and just come in here and just add a little bit more of some edges with an ink. Any ink, it does not have to be the Ranger ink. If you've got another good brown, the same method works. Just roughing it up, adding some darker areas, getting it grungy. That's what we want. We don't want it to look too pristine. We want this to look like it's an old farmhouse. Now in the back of my frames, when you get a frame, they have these little lips on them and that's where you put the, the backing on, leave them because now you can go through and you can re-put this back in and it holds it in place. And like this one's about to come loose, I'm not too worried about it. Basically, we just wanna be able to hold this in place. Now, if for any reason, all of these have started falling off or you didn't have them, you can glue it in place. There's nothing wrong with that, but might as well make my life easy. Now these little guys just kind of fit right in here, but we're gonna decorate it up a little bit. I'm just taking some washi tape and then just adding a couple of strips on here, just for some interest. It's just something different. I'm gonna do one here, I'm gonna do one there. You do not have to do this step. It is just adding some more fun and kind of another layer of something. And I think I'm even gonna add a bow. This kind of dresses up your fork a little bit. And then I'm gonna do the same thing to the spoon. I'm gonna add two little spots. Part of the other reason why I did this step was because the fork on this particular fork is very plain. It doesn't have any ornate scrolling or detailing. The spoon does, but since I did it to the fork, maybe I'll just do a single band on the spoon because this one's got, I don't know really easy to take washi tape off and this is really pretty washi tape kind of adds another layer here I'll just do a little bit down here it's kind of like you're dressing up your silverware that's in here all right I'm gonna find a pretty bow so I had this uh, yellow rope and I thought it would go really well with this so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this in half and I'm gonna use this to add and it's already have knots in it for some strange reason and I'm going to use it to kind of add a little bit of a detail to each. All right, so when you're doing a bow like this and you want to make sure that your tails are coming down, you make the two bunny ears like this, and then you just do a half knot and you pull one bunny ear through the loop of the other. If you try and tie it like you would your shoelaces, I know this is a shoelace knot as well, but if you try and do it the other way where you wrap it around your finger and through the hole and the whole thing, then um, you're gonna end up with one knot here. It's gonna look like this, where you have it off-centered. It doesn't look like a pretty little bow. So if you want a standard looking bow like we have here, then that's how you do it. And the other thing is, is that the reason why I did these separate versus trying to just tie them straight onto there is because you would run out of space and now I can place it exactly where I want to. And if I need to shift it, like I want to put it down here, but I think I'm liking it there. I don't want it here. Almost like they have little bow ties. It's kind of where we're going. All right, we were also given some fun chipboard shapes. So we're gonna play with that and I'm just gonna kind of mess around for a little while and see what I like. Kind of liking the placement of all this and I'm really kind of yeah that works for me so at this point and I, I really couldn't quite fit the clouds didn't make sense I didn't want it to be like a cloudy day um, there is two more triangles but they just kind of hid if you notice I put two here and then on this one I put them on the inside I like the fact that they're kind of one up and one down and that's why I'm probably gonna hang them on my wall when I get done and just gonna give them a little bit of something different here I like the hello but it's just too big and I didn't want to put a word on both and the hexagons fit really well with the pattern that was already there and I like this little pop of green every now and then it's kind of cool it's something a little bit different and then obviously all the other colors fit in really well so this set was from one canoe two it's still with the hazelwood um, and this is all the pieces that you got from it and there was a whole bunch of numbers but they just don't quite fit so I used all the flowers I used the love I used the butterflies I thought they were really kind of fun to go with 
with the bees, kind of, kind of give you that just fun. It's just decorating your frame. Okay, so now we got to put all these on. So I'm going to pull back out my Xyron sticker maker. Some of this we're going to have to, I cannot use a sticker maker for the utensils. They are going to fall down. But for all of these pieces, and here's a quick tip. Just, uh, we're going to get back all the, all the cork pieces we're going to use with the sticker maker. When you have something laid out and you have not glued it down, the best thing to do so you don't forget where you put what is take a picture of it. We all have phones now, so all you have to do is go in and take a quickie picture like I'm doing right here, which is boom, and therefore you kind of have what your layout is. It's not, um, you're not going, oh crap, where did I put that? Did I put this here or whatever? Because you've already fiddled with it and liked the way you had it, and therefore you don't have to go back and go, what did I do? Just look at your picture. It's really simple. I do this with cards. I do this with layout, scrapbook layouts. I do this with all my mixed media stuff. If I'm more concerned, I spent time placing everything out perfectly. I don't want to mess it up. All right. And I want it to be exactly where I had it from before. So I'm going to go ahead and lay all these little pieces in because all these cork pieces, they are not sticky. You have to add adhesive to the back of them. So very simple. Run it through my sticker maker. Make sure they catch. This is a perfect use for the sticker maker. And since I had the big one out already, I'm just going to continue using the big one. If you've got the little guy, use the little one. If you've got, I mean, there's such so small pieces, it doesn't matter. I just already had this guy out, so why not? All right, shift these off the side. Oops. Go ahead and continue running this through. Get them all through. Cut, cut. And so for this one, I'm going to use my Helmar Quick Dry Adhesive to kind of hold down my spoon and my fork. Now, when you think about it, there was only two places where the spoon actually hits. It hits here and it hits here. So that's the only place where I'm gonna put the glue, right there and right there. You wanna pick a good quality glue, something that's gonna make everything kind of stick to itself. Same thing with the fork, find it's there and right there at the tip. So those are the only places I need to put my glue. If you put it in here, it's never going to touch. You just find the places where the glue touches and you're good to go. Same thing with my little ribbons, my little bows. Just place it exactly where the glue is going to touch, which is right there at the knot. And then go ahead and place them down. And then while these are setting and drying up, and doing their thing, we can start placing all of our cork pieces on and just putting back exactly where we had it before. So you just peel off that top cover and I'm gonna have my picture off to the side and I'm just gonna start placing. So I pulled my cork piece a little bit too much, but that's fine, it's easy fix. I can just go in and pick up the L that I kind of hijacked and just do your best. And then I also left a little E. Cork can tear. It is kind of a fragile entity. So just stick it back down. I mean, you're never going to know that that was actually ripped. And if it really does bug you, uh, be a little more careful when you pull it off. <laughs> All right. So I'm still looking at about where every place and I had my big pink flower. So I'm going to speed this up while I place the rest of them. Oh, I did want to show you one thing though. Very carefully, I'm going to pull this off. And you're going to notice it whenever you have a hole. So on some of these pieces, because it's adhesive, you might get these little cobwebs. Just take your finger and kind of push them back and it's no big deal. And then go ahead and place it where you want. And I want this one to be kind of off centered a little bit and it's okay if they hang off don't worry about that the glue is strong enough to hold everything in place okay i'm going to start placing everything else down and speed it up and there we go it's as simple as that it's a fun way of doing a little farmhouse to farmhouse decor i can't get those words out using some scrapbook supplies some cork pieces some leftover silverware you may have in a drawer. It doesn't even have to be anything fancy. Some ribbon, some scrapbook paper, some washi tape, and some old frames you probably have laying around with a little bit of paint and some sandpapers. And that's it. Thanks so much. I'm going to get some pictures up on the wall and please subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.